Hey everyone, this is Joe. I am the Digital Astronomer. Thank you for tuning in to my channel. This week, I want to start a conversation. A conversation about the workflow that we use when processing data collected with a one-shot Keller camera and filters such as the L-Extreme or L-Enhanced filters from Optolong or the many, many other dual and tri-band filters that are available from manufacturers. I want to talk about the workflow that we use in processing that data. I'm going to share with you mine, and then I want to challenge you to share yours, and let's learn from each other. Stick around. I'll tell you more about what I have in mind. All right, let us let me explain exactly what I want to accomplish with this video. I want to make it real clear what I want to do. Dual and tri-band filters are game changers for those of us that are imaging with one-shot Keller cameras. They, they open up an entirely new world to us. They, quite frankly, because they allow us to cut through light pollution um, and they allow us to image uh, when there's a full moon out, they, they literally give us more opportunity to image throughout the course of the month and the year than we would normally have if we were just shooting broadband. So these are incredible tools. And really, the capture process of this is really quite simple. It takes a few minutes to set up. Quite frankly, capturing my data anymore is really simple. I've got it down to where uh, it takes me probably 15 or 20 minutes to get my telescope set up, polar aligned, star aligned, focused, and ready to image. It's a quick, simple process. Once you learn how to use your equipment and get it set up, that's easy. Now, that took me a while to get to that point, but now that's the easiest part. It's the processing that's really a challenge. And when you go to using the um, the, the, the narrow band filters uh, the, with a one-shot uh, Keller camera, honestly, the decisions and the options that you have available on how you process this data can just be mind-boggling. And I've learned over the last year uh, from a lot of the YouTube videos that I've watched I've learned from reading articles online. I've learned from uh, you know uh, posts that have been made in cloudy nights. I'm constantly working on my workflow. How do I go from point A to point B? How do I how do I go from stacking all the way to that final image? What are the steps that are involved in that? And I'm, I'm constantly working on refining my workflow. And what I thought about here this past week is what would be great is if we just used this channel for a little while to have this discussion. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to share with you my workflow. I'm going to say this, my most recent workflow. And then what I want you to do in the comment section is to do two things. Share your workflow. There's no one right way to do this. There's no single best way to do this. We're all using different tools. We're all using different software. We're using different add-ins, plug-ins, all kinds of different techniques that we're using in our astrophotography. So what I'd like you to do is share yours and then add some tips and advice into the comment section so that we can kind of help each other learn. I, I really want us to, to work on, as a community, improving each other's images. Now, I'm going to say this. Since I've been involved in astrophotography, I found the, the community of astrophotographers is really great. For the most part, I, I get almost all positive, encouraging, uplifting messages. Now, sometimes there's a few jerks out there, and if you're one of them, I, I will delete your comments. So if you put something hurtful, mean, or nasty, and you say, well, who's the arbiter of that? Me. Uh, it's my channel. And uh, so if you put something mean or nasty about someone up there, I'm going to delete you. But what I wanted you to do 
is encourage one another. Give each other some tips. Share with us some techniques, some tools, some things that you're doing, and let's work on improving our workflow. With that, let me share with you my most recent workflow of how I produced an image of the Rosette Nebula, and then I'll come back and once again invite you to get involved in the conversation. Okay, step number one of my workflow is to stack and separate out my HA and O3 data. And I'm going to use Astro Pixel Processor to do that, as I just mentioned. And it's really simple. Uh, I'll load up all of my lights, flats, darks. In this particular data set, I didn't have any dark flats, but normally I would have dark flats or biases as well. I load up all of my data on this page. I go to this page, which is zero, and what I want to use is a little bit different stacking algorithm. I want to extract HA. I'm going to run it all the way through the process. It will stack my HA data. Then I'm going to go and run it a second time on that very same data set and extract out the O3. And basically, at the end of that, I'll have my HA and O3 files. So step number one, stack and separate my HA and O3 files. That's a no-brainer. Again, you can do this with a lot of different pieces of software. I'm using Astro Pixel Processor. Cyril also has a good algorithm for this, and I'm sure, or the, uh, I'm absolutely sure PixInsight probably has an enormous way to do this. But that's step number one. Separate and stack your HA and O3 data. Okay, step number two in my process is to go ahead and I want to uh, batch crop my files. So here you can see I've got um, um, uh, the batch crop tool opened up here in Astral Pixel Processor. This is on uh, the toolbar. Uh, go to batch crop, and now I'm going to load in my HA and my O3 data. Hit open, OK. And what I'm trying to do, obviously, in batch crop is just get rid of all of these little stacking artifacts out around the edge. So I draw a box around it, press crop, and it will then crop my files. Um, so I go crop, um, click open. It's going to do that. I want to make sure that I save these as 32-bit in integers, uh, FITS files, so that I can do my next step, which will be my light pollution correction. Okay? Okay, step number three in my um, process, uh, my workflow rather, is to go ahead and remove any light pollution gradients. Again, I do this in Astro Pixel Processor, so I'm going to go over here. I'm going to click Remove Light Pollution. I'm going to go to my HA RGB3 crop. Um, I'm going to open that file up. And then all I have to do here is draw a series of boxes. If you uh, don't know how to do this, go back and watch one of my other videos where I do processing. I'll show you the, how I process, for instance, my image of the Orion Nebula, and I go through this in great detail. I want to do this on both the HA and the O3 data, and I want to get rid of any gradients. Once I've done that, then I can save the, these two files and go over to Photoshop and do the next step. Okay, step number four is to take the HA and O3 files that I just saved from Astro Pixel Processor. And by the way, let me mention, you need to make sure you save those as TIFF files so that you can work with them in Photoshop. Okay, once I've done that and saved them, I can come over here to Annie's Astro Actions, open it up, come down here to the HA03 by color process and simply uh, click the, the go button here or the play button. It's going to go ahead and ask me to select my HA image and I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to select the HA RGB session. Look what it says here, light pollution corrected cropped. I'm going to do my HA file. And it's going to have me do the same thing and select my O3 file. Once I've done that, it's going to run through a process. I just got to press uh, continue or OK as it goes along, and it will then combine those into this really reddish purple image. 
Okay, once that's done, I'm ready to go to my fifth step in my workflow, which is to color correct this image. Okay, step number five is color correction. You can see I've got this very purple and red color and I wanna start getting this to look a little bit better. So first thing I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go ahead and uh, duplicate this layer and I'm gonna call this color correction. And on this layer, the very first thing I'm gonna go up here to do is go to image, I'm gonna press auto color and immediately you can see that has fixed up the colors a lot on this. Now, they're not perfect. I'm gonna come back and do a little bit more work on this in a later step, but this is all I'm gonna do right now, except I wanna maybe try to see if there's any like excess green in the picture. And what I'm gonna do with that is just come up here to my filter. I'm gonna run Hosta La Vista Green. Again, I'll put a link to this, how you can get this. I'm gonna run it on medium and just remove any excess green. Okay, that was step number five. Now it's time to go on to step number six, which is star reduction. Step, step number six is star reduction. Once again, I'm gonna go ahead and um, uh, duplicate this oh. Oh. I'm gonna duplicate this layer. I'm gonna call this star reduction. And the reason I want to do that is just kind of draw back and draw more attention to the nebula. There's actually two steps I'm going to do uh, in this. I'm going to reduce the stars, then I'm going to exp I'm going to enhance the nebula. But um, I want to try to get the stars drawn back a little bit. The tool that I'm going to use for that is I'm going to come up here again to my action sets. I'm going to go to astronomy tools and I'm going to run two iterations of make stars smaller. So there's one. Wait till the little uh, revolving thing gets done here. Now I'm going to run that a second time. And I'll just show you real quickly what that's done here. Okay, let me put this down there. All right, let me turn this layer off. This was before the star reduction. This was after. And you can see all it really does is it draws a little attention off of the stars and makes the nebula stand out just a tiny bit more. All right, after this, now I want to go to step number seven, which is to enhance the nebula. Okay, what I want to do now is try to brighten up the nebula just a little bit. Once again, I'm going to go ahead and um, I'm going to duplicate the layer. I'm going to go put Enhance Nebula, okay, and once again, I'm going to use a very simple tool here. I'm going to go to my Action Sets, I'm going to go to Photochemy Star Tools, I'm going to come down here and I'm going to click on Nebula Filter and just run go. Now this takes a little bit longer, so I'm going to pause the video, but nevertheless, what all you really have to do here is every time it asks you uh, an option here, you'll have to make a few small inputs. So I'll turn it back on when it comes to the first uh, input. Okay, you can see after a couple of seconds here, it's going to ask me to adjust the black point. I'm going to press continue. And what I need to do usually is draw this back a little bit to uh, the left a little bit. It's usually uh, uh, a, a clipping just a little bit. So I, I just pull that back, press OK. It's going to run for another minute or so running through a series of processes. One thing I like about this is uh, this makes sure that uh, Photochemy's uh, uh, Nebula a filter does a great job of creating star mask and not blowing out all my stars while allowing me to really dig out a little bit more of that nebula and it works really good it does far better than I can do I, I've tried creating my own star mask and going through I always end up blowing out my stars too much so that's why I use this particular tool let me pause it oh it, it's coming up with the adjust black point I'm gonna go ahead and pull that back again I almost always have to pull this back to the left a little bit, maybe 
pull the stretch out just a tiny bit more. Press OK. And I'm going to pause while I wait for it to run the rest of this process. Okay, it continued to run that process for another couple of minutes. It did ask me to make another uh, a black uh, point adjustment. Let me show you the difference here. Um, if I turn off this layer, this is what I had before. This is after. And what you can see is it just really brightens up and brings out that nebulosity a little bit more without blowing out the stars. Okay, now we're ready to move on to step number eight in my workflow. Step number eight is going to be sharpen up the details. And again, there's a lot of ways you can do this. I'm going to duplicate the layer. I'm going to put sharpen details. Press OK. The tool that I like to use for this is the Camera Raw filter here in Photoshop. So I come up to Filter, go to Camera Raw. It's going to open up here in just a second. And now I can go over here to my basic uh, panel. I can uh, pull up. I'm going to try to adjust the contrast a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and try to see what happens if I pull up the highlights or if I turn them down. If I turn down the highlights, that's what it looks like. If I turn them up, I'm just I'm going to turn them up just a little bit. Bring out the highlights just a little bit more. Now I'm going to go ahead and darken up some of the shadows. I'm going to turn down the whites just a tad. Turn down the blacks to black up the sky just a little bit. Okay, I like that. Now what I can do is I, I, I'm going to pull up just a tiny bit of the dehaze. And then I'm not going to play with saturation yet. I'm going to do that later on. Uh, but I'm going to go to detail. I'm going to go ahead and pull up the sharpen button just a little bit to sharpen up the image. Then I'm going to pull over the noise reduction here just a tad. Not too much. There's not a lot of noise in this picture, so I'm pretty happy with that. Give it a little bit of nudge there. Press OK. Now we've sharpened it. So let's look at the difference. Let's see what's happened. This was before. This was after. Before, after. And you can see we've just sharpened up some of the detail. OK, let's move on to step number nine. Step number nine is to do some color adjustment. So once again, we're going to go ahead and duplicate the layer. Duplicate the layer, and we're going to go to Color Adjustment 2. Now here's where I want to kind of play around with trying to, to get the just the exactly right color balance and make it look the way I want it to look. A couple ways I can do that. I do this is I can go up to Adjustments. I can go to Hue and Saturation, and I can kind of pull this over a little more towards the red and you can see that's making that red stand out a little bit more. All right. Uh, I can also come up here to image. And I'm going to do a little bit with the channel mixers. All right. And so I can adjust up. I can make the red stand up a little bit like that. Just there. Oh, that's too much. And so what I'm going to do is just basically play around here with the color until I get it to look exactly the way I want it to look. Okay. And this is where I might spend a lot of time. You can see I'm just kind of fooling around with the sliders here. Ooh, I like that. That came out a little bit better. I can go here and I can move the blue. Maybe take a little of that green out. Maybe put a little. So a lot of Rosette Nebula pictures I find seem to over enhance. They really get crazy with the blues. And, and so I'm just going to play around with these channels until I get uh, the final, you know, so I get it to look the way I want it to look as far as the color balance. And again, this is a lot of subjective. You have to figure out what you like. All right, let's go on to the final step. Okay, I played around with the color a little bit and got that finished up. Now I'm on step number 10, which is what I'm just going to loosely call final adjustments. I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this layer again, put final adjustments on it. And this is sort of just a miscellaneous step. There's, there's a couple things I'm going to do. I'm going to go up here to filter, go back to camera raw, 
and uh, basically I'm going to adjust the uh, exposure a little bit. I'm going to bring this up just a tad just to brighten the image a little bit and then I'm going to bring up the saturation a tad like that and um, there's not a lot of noise in there. I'm really happy with that. Um, so what I'm, the, the thing I think I will do is come over here to detail. I might just pull up the noise reduction a tad bit. I don't want to get too much, but I hate noisy pictures. I really get annoyed with, with when my pictures come out real noisy. All right, so I'm just going to draw those up just a tad. And there we go. I'm going to press OK. And I'm going to look at that and go, I like that picture. Okay, so that's my workflow. Um, now let's talk a little bit about the workflow challenge. Okay, so as we say around here, that's it in a nutshell. That is my workflow for processing the data that I capture with my one shot Keller camera and my L Extreme filter. Now, the challenge is for you to share your workflow. And so what I want to challenge you to do is in the reply section, just put a, a, a quick little outline of the workflow that you use, as well as some tips. If you've got tips for me, leave them there for me. If you've got tips for some other people, let's get a discussion going and let's try to improve each other this year in our area of astrophotography. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do me a favor. Click on subscribe and like. I need as many subscribers and likes as I can possibly get and um, every one of them I really appreciate. So thank you for tuning in this week.